Hi, my name is uh, Mark Hopkins, and I'm here to show you how to make die cut labels from one of my favorite printers, the Apex 1290. Now, I start with a couple of tools. So, I've got my scissors, and I've got a loop, and I've got my uh, some sort of measurement. So, I've got a measurement tool in inches and metric. I always uh, have my certified media list, which I'll uh, explain a little more later on in the clip. And, of course, my source. So this is my media that I'm going to be using today. We have uh, four by six, three up labels. It's partially installed on the printer today. And we are using, like I say, the Apex 1290 with the feeder. And today we're going to put all the uh, printed labels up on the compact rewinder. Uh, this comes optional with slitters as well. So we'll show you uh, the production run. We'll show you how this all fits together and operates together. Okay, so uh, today I've uh, chosen just a Sony laptop. This is 64-bit, um, running the Windows 7. And uh, I've got my Apex to print all loaded up, and in behind that, you're not gonna see the, um, the RIP software. It's the Harlequin uh, RIP that, uh, from Global Graphics. And that's running in the background, and everything gets fired up when I uh, double-click on the icon. So. Um, I'm going to do that now. Now my Apex to print window comes up. So we're going to talk about you know three different phases in uh, what we're doing to build a, a production run. So we're talking about for the first time we're talking about you know the printer setup, and then we're talking about the label setup, and those are the two preliminary production run steps and then we're actually going to do a production run. So I brought up my screen and one of the things that uh, I have to be aware of is my setup options. So I want to make sure that my IP addresses are set up properly and it's very important that we use the static IP addresses as opposed to dynamic and that means putting a hardwired number, IP number in both your printer and your feeder. So we need to plug in two uh, Cat5 cables into the printing system and then we need to identify that through the software and this is where we bring this window up. We have identified uh, both of the IP addresses on the printer and the feeder and we're gonna we're gonna correlate those to uh, what we have today in the software. So I put those in already and we're going to save those. Okay, so um, we're back over here with the uh, certified media list. Okay, so this is, um, you know, you'll see this uh, would come with the printer. Um, that comes with all your software downloads. And basically the certified media list is a long dictionary of medias that run on the Apex 1290, and in behind that is a description of each and every one of the medias with all the specs. Now, this is really important. So, if you're buying a media that's already certified from one of our partners that is in a converting business, um, you're going to get a number, and you're just going to type that number in, and I'll show you that on the software. Um, a lot of times, though, uh, you're looking for a media in your local area and you're not too sure if it is certified or not. And there's a good chance that it would be. So what we want to do is we want to get your specifications for your media and we want you to cross-reference that with a specification in the media library. So if it's a matte paper, it's all organized to gloss paper, uh, plastics such as PE and PET. So we got it all categorized, very easy to find, very easy to cross-reference. And then when you do find the matching media, we want an exact match. Um, what you do is now take that number and we're going to put that into our software. So for me, I've selected a certified media. And this is this, just a plain, non-coated matte paper, okay? And this one is uh, the certified media 11001 in our library. Okay. okay, so now what we've shown you is the 4x6 3 up labels. So we want to identify, uh, you know, all the rest of the printer setups um, to accommodate 
this role of media and the media type. So we go through and we actually select the media. And of course, paper, mat, and it takes me right to my media type, 11001. So we're going to double click on that. So we now have that media selected in the software. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different parameters listed in the media. And another part of the setup is going to be getting the right guide width on the printer or the feeder and having that match up with the exact dimensions of the, um, the media width. So that rule of media that we're going to load, um, we want that to be quite exact uh, for our loading. So I took my measurement and I came up with 12.31. So I'm going to actually put that into uh, my media width. So simply measuring the, the width of the roll gives you your measurement, which now you're going to tell your um, feeder to actually automatically adjust to. Okay? Okay, so now I've selected my media width and nothing else. And uh, I'm going to hit apply. Um, I want die cut mode as well. So two things will talk to the printer at this point or the feeder for the adjustment. You can either go through calibrate sensor or you can go through print. So either one of these will necessitate something to happen at the feeder. So if your media width is not the same size in the software that it is in the feeder, it will know and it will come up with some sort of, uh, of instructions. So I've hit calibrate sensor and now it's telling me that the feeder guide is set up for 8.25 inches and we want uh, 12.310. So we're going to hit OK. Now we're sending a, uh, the information over to the feeder and it's unloaded the media, just unloaded the media and now it wants us to go over to the feeder and finish the rest of the load up on the feeder. And we just simply have to read the instructions on the front panel of the feeder. So my feeder, I've cleared the path, um, we put the the 12.31 inch media in already just to load it up and now what I want to do is I want to get it all set up for the new media type and I do I'm reading my front panel and it says clear uh, the guide path okay guide path clear let's hit done now it's taking on the um, the characteristics and the specifications completely for doing the uh, 11001 at that media width. So I'm going to go finish the load here. Now my load here is very good. Um, with the measurement, I'm seeing very little uh, space between the guides and uh, the page, the edge of the page on both sides. And that's what I want. I want a, um, I don't know best to describe it, but I would say a snug fit. The front, lift up your guide arm. Make sure you get a nice tension on the roll. This is a nice flat roll. That's um, gonna give us no problems at all going through the machine. Um, just as a little disclaimer though, I've got uh, the uh, interlocks on this just to show you um, so when you're doing this, you'll be opening and closing doors. Um, so we'll do the load. A nice fresh cut on the media. It's a removed cut media from the printer. So what I would normally do is open it from the front, remove the media, press done. ready to go on the printer. Okay, so we're back at the uh, software and uh, it says uh, continue printing, so okay. Now, because I selected 
the calibration for the sensors, which I really want to do this. Um, it can be in the library already, and I can just move it over, copy the settings from the library. Um, in this case, I'm just going to run the calibration, but that's going to make me reload my media again after I do this, which is not a big deal. Okay, so the first time I was over at the feeder, we got the guide set up, and we're really happy with that. Now we want to set up the actual um, the sensor calibrator, and that's the gap between the two labels, and that's needed to uh, put our image down uh, center on the label. And uh, because today we're going to build an edge-to-edge -edge label, we definitely want to make sure that the uh, calibration is done properly. So um, as an extra step, you won't have to do this once you've done this once with this media. You'll, you won't have to do it again. So this is just a one-time deal. And we're just going to back off the gap. You can see that. And it's just below our sensor, which is this square opening on the right-hand side guide, the red guide. So we're going to run another little uh, sensor calibration through the software. So I'm back at my software, and I'm going to run that calibration test again. So we hit Run Calibration. And my window disappears. Well, that means that the calibration ran perfectly. So we're ready just to reload the media one more time. It takes two seconds, and then we're going to start doing the, um, the label setup. So through sensor calibration, um, we actually have to remove the media, the actual start position, which is actually up here, to do the proper calibration for the sensor. So all I got to do now is just go through the reload. So it says on the, on the um, front panel, it says require load. So let's hit the load button. perfect position for what we get uh, as a loaded message on the front panel is under status it says idle that means everything is fine we don't have any lights on we don't have a red light we're good to go so now we got to go in and start doing our label setup so now we've got the right media width so 12.31 and now we're gonna have to start seeing where our position is so um, the size of the label and the size of the die cut and uh, you know various media types they dictate as to where the start position should be and um, you know the gutter and the alleys there's a typical setting but we might have to change those depending on what the um, requirements are for uh, the the gap in the alley okay so when you're looking at uh, the print coming out of the back of the machine um, and you're standing at the front panel of the, the feeder. Um, the, your right hand side, when, when it comes to horizontal shift, is plus, and your left hand side is minus. So if you want to move the image to the left, we're going to go it to a negative value or less a value. And then on the right hand shift, we're going to do positive. Okay? So um, what I'm going to do is, um, the very next thing is I'm going to select my uh, label. So I'm going to open up the file, and I've got some labels on my desktop that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab one off my desktop. So let's go with this guy here. I've loaded up my file. This is my image. I'm going to do step and repeat. And the number of labels that I want are 24 labels. So... Um, I know that with my uh, measurements, um, I know that my gap or my gutter is uh, an eighth of an inch, so that's uh, 0.125, and the alley is the same, 0.125. Uh, I'm not too sure my start position is or my left-right position. So I'm going to do the setup uh, portion of this, and I'm just going to apply that. And then I'm going to print the file, and we're going to have a look and see where the image is. 
All right, so my media is coming out the back, and now I want to adjust my rewinder at the same time. I want to set that up. So I've got it all adjusted. Basically what I can do with this initial test is I can just blanket the output of the actual label job over top of my rewinder, make the necessary adjustments, make sure that I've got my core all set up, it's all tightened up, and make sure I'm plugged in and I'm running in the right direction. I've got all that set up, so I'm happy. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to check my position of my label. So we did our 24 labels. Now I want to check and see position. So right here looking really quick. I've got my left right margin is looking really good. Uh, but I need to do something with my start position. So I need to push that down. And uh, that's a plus value. Okay, so we're ready to go to production. Um, one of the things I want to mention is that we never measure from the first page. First page is in 10 inch increments, okay? So whatever makes up 10 or more inches. So two, six inch long labels makes up uh, plus 10 inches, 12 and some change. So I want to look at this page and I want to look at this page but then I really want to do my measuring on the third page. And that's where I've got my measurement. And I'm happy with that. I've got it lined up to where I want it. I'm ready to go for production. My left right looks good. So I'm happy with this. And you know, um, when you're first starting out, sometimes your math and your measurements aren't perfect. So uh, a little bit of trial and error. And, um, and, and you can place this label pretty well anywhere you like. And like I say, today we're doing real nice edge-to-edge -edge printing. Um, so let's go, uh, let's go run a production run. production. Just a couple other features to point out is um, the uh, Apex to Print software actually does uh, label rotation. Um, it'll do mirror image which is uh, really cool for um, clear plastics. Um, and uh, I can also do a uh, rip per, as a percentage, so I can grow my label. And um, in another tutorial, we're going to talk about a full bleed both on a uh, matrix on and matrix removed uh, die cut label. And uh, we'll be using these rip scaling options to do that. I can also select my X and my Y just by clicking on that. And I can grow my image by X number of uh, inches. So in this case, uh, and we haven't checked the box, so the image is one to one. But in this case, I could actually grow my image by 0 .030 inches. So that's a very, very powerful tool. Um, so when I do any work down here, what I got to do is I got to clear my image list and bring import this back in by going up and opening file and then it'll re-rip the file as per these instructions down here so I have a rotated landscape or portrait uh, label perhaps my customer gave me the wrong orientation so I can reorient it to the way that it should look in production um, so we've got some really cool software we've got cost calculators um, we have a new nesting feature, 
that I can put, uh, you know, several different jobs uh, of the same uh, size. So if I wanted to run the Castle Ridge label, but I wanted to run the Castle Ridge not only Pinot Gris, I wanted to run the Cabernet label, and I wanted to run um, that, that beautiful 2001 Syrah label. Um, I can gang those all together through my nesting software. All right, so we've got 1,002 labels. Uh, this took no time at all. Uh, we're going to seal this guy up. And I want to show you a little trick with the, with the uh, fins, the guides on the compact rewinder. So we're going to run another job. It's going to be the same size. I don't want to lose my position with these. So I'm just going to use my thumb against the guide as my mark. So I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to lift my guide up, making it rest against my thumb as the mark, and I'm going to tighten it up again. And then I'm going to do the reverse when I put my new uh, roll in, and then I don't have to readjust. So I'm already on spot with this. So we'll lift this guy up too. Snug it up in position. Unload my roll. Thousand and two labels. Ready to go to a happy customer.